when I was a legal affairs editor of the Chicago Tribune. The case involved a defendant by the name of James Dixon, and he was accused of attempted murder for shooting a Chicago police officer. The case is a very interesting one. James Dixon had gone to his girlfriend's house. He was arguing with his girlfriend's father through the front door of the home, and somebody called the police. A sergeant by the name of Richard Scanlon arrived on the scene. The father of the girlfriend came out of the house, and he got into a fist fight with James Dixon. The police officer got in the middle of the two to try to break him up, and then all of a sudden, a shot rang out. The police officer was wounded. Right then, another squad car pulled up, and they handcuffed James Dixon. Now, the police believed that they had a, an incredibly tight case against James Dixon. They had a lot of evidence. First of all, they found his gun a short distance away where he had apparently thrown it. That gun had his fingerprints all over it. There was one bullet missing from that gun, and the gun was registered to James Dixon's name. What's more, Sergeant Scanlon's gun had never gone out of its holster. And the father of James Dixon's girlfriend wasn't armed at all. In addition, there were powder burns on the skin of the police sergeant. That indicates that he was shot at incredibly close range. In addition, when they ran a background check about James Dixon, what they found is he had been accused and convicted once earlier of shooting somebody else. So he apparently had a history of violence. In addition to that, after awaiting trial for a year in the county jail, James Dixon finally pleaded guilty. He admitted it. He said he did it. Now, they thought they had a great case against James Dixon. And I did too. As a reporter, I remember walking out of the courtroom saying, well, that's not much of a story. The police sergeant recovered from his wounds. It's an open and shut case. Maybe three paragraphs in the Chicago Tribune. But I was very wrong. Because the next day I got a phone call. And that phone call was from an informant of mine. And he said, hey, Lee, do you know the James Dixon case? I said, yeah. He said, you know, I think there's more to it than you're giving it credit for. I said, what do you mean? He's clearly guilty. It's nothing case, open and shut. He said, no. He said, recently, Sergeant Scanlon was seen at a party with a pen gun. I said, what's a pen gun? He said, well, a pen gun is sort of like a fountain pen, except it's really a 22 caliber pistol. They're illegal for anybody to carry. And I said, well, what's that got to do with anything? He said, Lee, don't you get it? Sergeant Scanlon had the the pen gun in his pocket. While he was struggling with James Dixon and the other man, the pen gun went off and it wounded him. Now, he didn't want to be caught with an illegal gun, so he falsely accused James Dixon of shooting him. And I said, that's preposterous. And my informant said, Lee, check it out yourself. See where the evidence points. And that's what I began to do. I began to check out the case from a whole different perspective. And I found some very interesting things. First of all, I found a witness who said that before the police had arrived, James Dixon had been pounding on the door with the handle of his gun, and the gun had gone off. In fact, I also found a fresh chip of cement from the, from the little stoop there of the house that showed that a, a, a bullet had indeed ricocheted off of it. Well, that would account for the missing bullet. Secondly, I found another witness who said that he had seen James Dixon take the gun and run across the street and hide it before the police arrived. That would explain how it ended up way over there. The police assumed he'd somehow thrown it, but nobody had seen him throw it. Third, the powder burns on the police sergeant. They were concentrated inside the pocket, at the bottom of his pocket. Well, that says that somehow a gun had gone off inside his pocket. The police report also said that he was shot by a bullet that went sort of lateral. But what the evidence showed is that the bullet trajectory was downward through the bottom of the pocket, and it went through some flesh before going into the ground, and they never quite found it. What's more, when we investigated the background of James Dixon, we found that, yes, he was convicted of shooting somebody else. He spent time in prison doing that. The problem is he was later let go by the appellate court. Why? Because he'd been innocent. Well, that started to shed some new light on the case. But it left one important question. If James Dixon was really innocent, why did he admit that he did it? Why did he plead guilty? Well, I went to James Dixon, and I asked him that question. 
This is what he told me. He said, I had awaited trial in jail for a year. And here was the deal the prosecutors offered me. They said, if you admit that you shot the police sergeant, then we'll let you go with time served. In other words, we'll sentence you to one year in prison. You already served your year in prison. You can go home. But if you insist on a trial and a jury finds you guilty, we're going to sentence you to 20 years in prison. So James Dixon said, I didn't have a choice. It was either lie and admit that I shot the police sergeant and go home or go to trial, maybe be convicted, and then spend 20 years in prison. So he said, I admitted something that I hadn't done. Well, I published these articles in the Chicago Tribune, and as a result, James Dixon was exonerated. The police sergeant was indicted, and he later pleaded guilty to official misconduct and was thrown off of the police force. But most important, I learned some very important lessons as a young reporter. First of all, I learned that the evidence could be made to point in more than one direction. Yes, you could align the evidence and show that James Dixon was quote unquote guilty of shooting the police sergeant. There was enough evidence to find him guilty and to send him away to prison. The problem was he didn't do it. These were the questions that needed to be asked. Was the collection of the evidence really thorough? And secondly, which explanation best fit the evidence? Well, no, the collection of the evidence had not been really thorough. And secondly, when you had all of the evidence, the best explanation was that the police sergeant had been shot by his own pen gun, not that he was shot by James Dixon.